my talk's going to be on the New Zealand Fish Passage Advisory Group and what we've done to improve coordination and management of a key pressure facing our fresh waters. So far, um, we've still got lots to go. So our freshwater species, they need our help. We've got 73 freshwater invertebrates that are currently endangered um, throughout New Zealand and have got a conservation status and 21 freshwater fish. That's not counting the ones that are also at risk that we're concerned about locally um, and that just need access to and from the sea and to different catchments. Of our freshwater fish, 74% of those freshwater fish are at risk or threatened. So that's a really high proportion of our freshwater community. 26% uh, of those have increased in conservation ranking in the latest ranking. There has just been another recent ranking um, which we haven't got the results of as yet. 9% um, identified as at risk um, or threatened for the first time. So there's new ones becoming that we did think that they were okay and now we are concerned about them. So as I said, our freshwater species need to move. Our freshwater fish, we've got a number of species that need to move from the marine system to the freshwater and back again to complete their life cycles. They need to not only have those open river mouths to be able to gain access, but they also need to be able to move between and within the rivers. We also have a number of species that are resident. So they complete their whole life cycle in our freshwater rivers and streams, but that doesn't mean that they don't need to move. They still need to move to find food, to spawn or to lay their eggs and to complete their life cycles. So that, that open <coughs> passageway is, is really important. Now the other part that I really want to push home is it's not just our freshwater fish that need that movement. A lot of our aquatic invertebrates have their larval stage, so their baby stage in the streams and what they do is they emerge, they become the adult and they fly upstream. And those in-stream structures also can impede our fish passage or the passage that they need to complete their life cycle. So even though it's termed fish passage, it does mean we keep the invertebrates in there as well. <clears throat> so as all of us are well aware, we've changed our rivers. We've got a lot of in-stream structures that have been put into our waterways. And we've got floodgates and tide gates, as was mentioned by Catherine this morning, right down at the start of our rivers. These are all been installed, some with the best of intentions, but over time some of these have been installed correctly or they haven't been maintained and they've become barriers. So what we need to do is we need to become smarter with those in-stream structures and there's lots of things we can do to help them. So these things here, fish passage obviously is a key threat facing our freshwater. Um, it results in the loss and the degradation of habitat and of species. Um, but it also, there's another threat that's sort of facing, which is the predation or the competition by introduced species. And actually, both of these examples are things that, through management of fish passage, we can actually improve and, and we can make a difference. We've also got legislative requirements. So the Ministry for the Environment and the Ministry for Primary Industries have national environment statements, national policy statements, which set direction for our freshwater management like the, um, the forestry side of things. We've got regional councils that have the Resource Management Act and they manage and control the environmental effects that are happening on our rivers. And we've also got the Department of Conservation who I work for and we've got a mandate to protect our freshwater habitats and also advocate for the conservation of our aquatic life and our freshwater fisheries. But specifically we have freshwater fish regulations which have fish passage regulations within them. So any culvert and ford may not be built to impede fish passage without a permit from us and also that any dam or diversion structure that's built may have to have a fish facility. Now these haven't been implemented well throughout New Zealand but this is one of the things that we want to change as part of the implementation of the National Fish Passage Guidelines. We want to make sure that pe people are adhering to these and this is actually helping us from a fish passage management perspective. So to start this improvement in managing this key threat facing freshwater, we held a <coughs> workshop back in 2013 where a whole lot of people came together in, in Wellington involved in fish passage management. We presented information of the current status and what was happening in New Zealand at the time. And the key findings from that was that we needed greater coordination and we needed some national guidelines. Now there's a number of different guidelines around the place. There's different regional guidelines, there's local guidelines, and they're all slightly different. So we all want to be talking from the same song sheet. So Doc and um, Niwa took on this challenge. 
So Paul and myself, um, we got together in 2014 and signed a memorandum of understanding between the department and NIWA and gave a commitment that we were going to work together to improve the coordination of fish passage, improve and maintain access to key resources, um, improve the profile and promote better management of fish passage and research. Um, so we had a number of deliverables that are associated with that, which are up on the board, which I will go through as the, talk, uh, as the talk progresses. So one of those key things that we did as one of the first steps was creating the New Zealand Fish Passage Advisory Group. Now this represents um, a group of ecologists, engineers and planning and other people involved in fish passage management, um, representing those groups involved in fish passage. So, you know, it's not just as simple as ecologists, yep, we've got it sorted, we've got the best guidance. We need the engineers, we need the planners, everyone to be talking from the same song sheet. So we were lucky enough to um, commandeer Bryn, who became our chair, um, he's an engineer for Tonkin and Taylor, and we managed to get all these people that were really interested in being part of this new direction and more national coordinated approach. So our aim was to use our multidisciplinary team to develop, communicate, promote and advocate for improved technical guidance and policy to support fish passage <laughs> and that connectivity of our waterways. So you'll see a picture of us at our latest meeting in Christchurch, there are a few people missing, um, but go and ask any one of them and they'll be able to tell you some more about it. So our key um, fish passage advisory route roles was better coordination, promoting that awareness and implementation of the best practice. Um, increasing accessibility to it. Um, a lot of it was grey literature in someone's office on the bookshelf. We couldn't get readable, readable, readable access to it. We wanted a central point of reference and we wanted to coordinate an interdisciplinary approach. Um, we wanted to make sure that we were liaising with all the key groups um, and promoting and influencing any future legislation and policy. So we've got, uh, what I'm going to take you through is we've set up our advisory group under some subgroups and I'm just going to take you through a bit of an update on each of the subgroups. So we've got Katty um, from Cawthorne Institute that she leads the um, improved coordination and communication side of things. So we've got a website um, which is held on the DOC website but is a joint website between DOC and NIWA. We've got an email so that one point of contact with a wider interest group. And now if anyone's keen to join there are flyers at the back of the room if you're not already on the um, system and you'll get regular updates of the newsletter, um, the Fresh Connection and also you'll find out all about the national guidelines coming out. We've got banners, flyers and posters and you'll see some of them up around the room. Um, we've got a logo so it just represents that it's all of those um, organisations working together and it's our independent logo. We've also got the improved guidance sub-team which is led by myself. Um, we've got key guidance on our web pages that we keep updating just as a bit of a um, backup before we get the national guidelines. We've also got these lessons learnt which get downloaded a lot from our storage um, resources site and they're key lessons that people have learnt from doing fish passage remediation. Um, things that you need to know um, and you don't want to make the same mistake as the person before them and what's been successful and what's not. Um, the collation of good fish passage um, advice within the department, so getting ourselves ready for being able to process those permits that are required um, better and more efficiently. We've also got the awesome eels um, activity sheet which Amber McEwen did um, and we had part of to celebrate the last World Fish Migration Day and at the moment we're in the midst of creating a new white bait activity sheet with the same to help us celebrate World Fish Migration next year. So we've got the national guidelines um, that are coming out. So this is our first um, bit and they're focused on structures under four metres. So we've still got things that we need to meet. Yeah, we know there's lots of structures over four metres as well. So implement implementation is planned for next year. It's going to include this national launch workshop. So everyone put the 18th of April in your, in your diaries. And um, we've got MFE that are going to host a whole lot of regional workshops around the country. And we're also going to be at the stormwater conference, plus a whole lot of other um, things. But we're also going to take that opportunity on the 18th of April to use it as a bit of a celebration for World Fish Migration Day as well. We've also got um, the a protocol app and structures database. So I was really jealous when we saw um, Julian Alden's talk the other day when he showed up the graphics display of what barriers have come over time and where exactly they are. We don't have that in New Zealand yet. 
we won't have something quite that flash, but we're going to have something soon, which will be quite exciting just to know where our structures are. Now that was um, funded by EnviroLink, and that's going to be due sort of mid next year. Um, and Paul will be sort of focusing more on that in the next talk. Cindy leads, leads the research strategy side of things from NIWA, um, and what we did is in the 2013 workshop we collated a whole lot of get research gaps, and we've further developed those and prioritised them into a bit of a database, and we're going to develop that into a research strategy that students, lecturers and those can use to fill some of our key gaps. We've just recently started um, a new sub-team, um, which is large dams. We identify that um, that's going to be one of the key areas that we need to better manage and provide some guidance on. So Chris from Trust Power is leading that. And we also have our advocacy uh, sub-team, which looks at providing submissions on some key national um, policy directions like the NES forestry and those sort of things, which we focus specifically on our fish passage. So we've still got lots and lots of gaps to fill, but we've made a start. Um, we've got the water intakes and water um, screening side of things. We've got a possible collaboration that we can work with Australia um, if they get some funding into the future. Um, and lastly, I just wanted to um, finish on the World Fish Migration Day. Now, that is happening next year. It's a two yearly event and it's, it's celebrating free access to rivers moving up and down. So you can create the smallest event um, or a massive public event for kids for technical talks. Um, but I'd really encourage you to go there and register an event um, if you can.